Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my review of the Kershaw Knockout Folding Pocket Knife. Just picked this one up a little over a week ago. Been EDCing it every day, cutting with it some general EDC cut tasks and I absolutely love it. Um, I had done a first impressions video when I first picked it up and uh, I had told you guys that the handles were being produced with G10 which I was completely wrong about so I apologize about that. Um, these handles as of June of 2012 according to Kershaw are being produced in aluminum which is was the original prototype design which I'm happy about. I prefer the aluminum. The only thing I dislike is that the subframe lock is now painted black which is not a bad design I just pref would have preferred it with that metal looking design that sort of unfinished look or somewhat of a stone wash look that they um, that, that was in the prototype of this knife but nonetheless this is I think a great great design great look overall um, let's start off with the weight let me get my scale here and I'll go ahead and weigh it for you guys zero it out the knife is sitting at 3.8 ounces which is what they advertise the aluminum handled version so that's good it's a uh, pretty accurate there I believe the G10 version was 3.6 ounces but 0.2 ounces doesn't really matter to me now right off the bat I told you guys that this is the Kershaw knockout and the reason why is because they knocked out a portion of these aluminum handles and created a subframe lock now this is a solid steel piece right here but it is not um, it is not a portion of the frame it's actually screwed together or bolted together with these torque screws right here these two screws inside of these liners or scales excuse me not liners but scales um, this subframe lock metal piece right here is actually screwed into the handle by these two screws right here so it's not a true frame lock but it is a subframe lock which I believe is still um, fairly strong it locks up strong up and down side to side there's no blade play absolutely whatsoever and you can see that the lockup is fairly early at about 40 to 50 percent now speaking of the lockup I want to try and show you um, the way that this lock face is where the lock meets the bottom end of the blade it's not a it's not a straight design it does have somewhat of a curve to it a curve this way underneath the blade but it's not a very extreme curve and it's flat it's not um, it's not curved like this actually I should be showing you with this hand um, it's not curved like this it's it's a flat only it's a little bit a little bit angled so that I think that's gonna serve this blade well it's gonna lock up for quite a while pretty strong it should but I think over time it will wear down and cause some blade play many years down the road I think if you use this knife every day you're not gonna see any issues but it's not the best um, frame lock or sub frame lock so they call it um, it's not the best lockup but it's still great you know it doesn't have any up down or side to side blade play which is what you want the knife to do now I should say when I first got this knife the blade centering um, was off but as you can see I was actually able to take the knife apart do some adjustments and play around with it and I got it to be pretty much exactly centered and um, I did that by just taking the scales taking the whole knife apart um, kind of refiddling with things a few times um, loosening these two screws right here to allow the handle to somewhat loosen up although you can still see that um, the back spacer is fl flush with both sides of the handle um, just with some fiddling with it and I adjusted the pivot screw right here just a little bit so as you can see I was able to fix the blade centering which is great now, this is a speed safe assisted opening knife deploys extremely fast which is great I usually don't sought after knives with assisted opening mechanisms but um, I don't mind them as long as they serve the purpose I don't buy knives for the fact that they have assisted opening but I don't mind it so um, that's a strong point of the blade um, the steel on this blade is 14 C28 in Sandvik steel and um, this is the first knife I've had with the steel on it 
I've been, like I said, EDC in this for a little over a week, cutting packages, um, cardboard, cutting fruit, and it's still extremely sharp. Um, I'll probably roll some cut tests in at the intro, the beginning of the video, but that's with me not sharpening this knife. I mean, it's still um, hair popping sharp. I'll show you here. Still hair popping sharp after all the use I've gotten on it. See if you can see the hair. So you can see the hair on the blade. Um, still extremely sharp after using it for a little over a week. Haven't had to touch it up or strop it or anything. So um, that's a good thing in my book. Seems to be a great EDC blade, um, great EDC steel, and hold this edge retention um, reasonably well. Long term, I don't know, you know, what steel you would compare it to, but that's something you might want to research if you're concerned with that. But I'm not an expert on steels. I just know that this one seems to work pretty well for me. Now this blade is stone washed, and it's a beautiful stone washing in my book. Looks great. You can see this is made in the USA, which is a great feature and a great selling point for me. Um, was really happy about the fact it's made in the USA. It does have a flipper and dual thumb studs to deploy the knife, so you can deploy it either way you want, although I recommend just using the flipper. Um, the reason for that is just the way that the subframe lock is designed. Um, the way that if you're right-handed especially and you want to use these um, thumb studs, you, f you have a tendency to want to grip the knife over that subframe lock. And when you do that, it creates pressure and more tension on the blade, making it harder to deploy. So I recommend just using the flipper. That way you don't need to hold the knife as tight. It just pops right open with authority. But that's what I do, just something I've noticed. Another thing I've noticed is that if you're right-handed also, and you want to close the knife one-handed, and I said this in the first impressions, but I keep having a tendency to want to hold on to the knife and grip it tightly when I'm trying to close it and disengage that lock. It makes it harder to do if you're grabbing it with your middle finger or, uh, or your next finger over right here. So something to keep in mind, you do kind of have to get your fingers out of the way to uh, disengage that lock and close the blade, but um, not too difficult after you've done it a few times, but it just takes some getting used to. Um, I have gotten cut by this blade a few times, you know, I've got a cut there, but uh, was extremely sharp out of the box. Um, just a really great design. Now the handle is a smooth, as I said these are aluminum, it is a smooth uh, surface, there's not no jimping anywhere. But the ergonomics on it, I'd say, are pretty good. You can see I can get a full four-finger grip on it with a little bit of space, um, the bottom end of the handle coming out of my hand. And it's a real comfortable grip. Now, I have somewhat on the large hands. I don't think um, it would be very comfortable if my hands were very much larger, just for the fact that um, just the way the handle's designed, it feels like it's pushing the blade, the handle feels like it's pushing my fingers down this way. Um, so if my hands were any bigger, it'd feel like they're going to come off of the blade. Um, which brings me to my next point. Um, you can see my hands are sweating. It's kind of warm in here. But uh, there is a lanyard hole, but it's extremely, extremely tiny. Um, I would actually like to put a lanyard on this, but you're going to have to uh, use some technique to get it some paracord through that hole. Um, it is doable, but it's just one of the smallest lanyard holes I've ever seen. So. Just keep that in mind. Um, it has a deep carry pocket clip, carries really deep. Um, the retention on it is great, it's extremely strong, which is a really good uh, feature about the knife. I enjoy deep carry, and it is quad mountable, so I prefer right-handed tip-down carry, and it carries really well like that. Um, covers almost the entire knife. That's what you're gonna see popping out of your pocket, which is barely nothing at all. So uh, really like the pocket clip. As I said, the handles are great. Um, I can start to see where it's wearing on the aluminum. The coating's starting to come off, the paint. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of like a, that makes the knife more sought after in my book. Um, just when you start to get that wear on the pocket clip and on a black knife like this, I think it just adds character to the knife. Um, but some people don't like that, which is understandable. Uh, let's see, it does have a top swedge on the blade, which is a cool design, I think, 
get you in frame here. Um, has a really, really wide belly here. Real deep belly. Look at the belly on that knife. That's a great selling point. Just a great, great slicer in my opinion. Great cutter. Um, it's not a full flat grind, but it's still. I was still able to slice through fr fruit pretty well uh, without any issue. So really like that blade design. The deployment is really smooth. Um, I actually took this knife apart. It has copper washers on both sides. Um, the side opposite of the subframe lock has a larger washer and a smaller washer on the um, side where the subframe lock is. But it just allows it to deploy smoothly. Um, the blade retention is great. Uh, that assisted opening doesn't kick in till about this point right here. So you can see I have the knife open. Um, it's not deploying and it won't deploy, you know, even if I'm trying to make it without touching the handle. But as soon as you get past that point, it just pops right open. So uh, that assisted opening mechanism, the speed safe, really works great on this knife, along with good retention of the edge. Excuse me, not the edge <laughs> of the blade. Uh, good retention in the keeping the blade from coming out in the handle. You can see it bounces right back. So another cool thing about this knife. So, you know, overall, I really like this knife. I'm sure I forgot some to topics on it. Uh, maybe I'll annotate it if I did. But um, overall, I think it's a knockout design. No pun intended. Just one of my favorite folders that I've ever bought. You can pick these up for around 60 to $65 for a made in the USA knife with stone washing, aluminum handles, extremely strong and great ergonomics, a subframe lock, deep carry pocket clip. I think it's just a great design overall. Um, it's not pinned together, it has torque screws. You can take the whole knife apart, clean it, maintain it as needed. Overall, I just think it's a great design. Like I said, one of my favorite buys of the year. So. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the review, and I hope it was helpful. Oh, you know what? One more thing. Size comparison. CRKT shenanigan right there. Give you kind of an idea of size. Um, this is a somewhat of a large knife, although it's not quite as long as something like the shenanigan. Kind of see there. But it is a long knife. I'm not going to throw the specs out there. I'll put them in the description. But um, in my opinion, just a great buy. Extremely thin handles. I showed this in the first impressions, but here's a standard Victorinox keychain tool. Look at how thin that handle is on this knife. Extremely thin, almost as thin as that Victorinox. Compared to the Shenanigan, which is also somewhat of a thin knife. And you can see the difference. So overall, like I said, great design, great knife. Um, if you're looking at it, I recommend it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.